Today, I'm combining my two favorite things, art and chocolate. So come join me in the kitchen and see what's cooking on today's show. Hi, I'm Jamie Peterson. It seems like every year my gift giving list gets longer and longer, which can make for an expensive and overwhelming holiday. But I have the simple and affordable solution that will knock the socks off anyone lucky enough to be on your holiday radar. These stamp boxes and coordinating chocolates are quick and easy. And you can do several at a time, so you can get your gift giving all knocked out in one afternoon. Well, depending on how large your social network is, maybe it will take two. We're going to start with the delicious part of the project. I have some store-bought chocolates that I've got, and I found that solid chocolates work the best for me, but you can also use peanut butter cups, caramels, all kinds of other delights. Um, you might want to do some experimentation of your own, and it's really easy to dispose of the mistakes, and that's the sacrifice that you have to make for your art. I'm using new stamps because I don't want anyone getting sick from any ink. These festive sets are from Hannah Stamps, and they're great because they have both large and small elements. I'm going to use the smaller images for my chocolates and boxes, and then I can use the larger ones for cards and tags, and then everything matches. They're acrylic, so I'm going to be able to see where I'm placing them in the chocolate. Now I just need to lubricate the stamp so that it comes out of the chocolate more easily. I'm gonna use household vegetable oil, and the Judykins blank ink pads work amazingly well for this purpose. The porous, thirsty surface soaks up that oil right away, and then you're ready to go. So I just pounce the stamp in the oil. Then I'm gonna bring in my chocolates, and they're all ready to go in their little cups, which I just got at the craft store. I'll need to heat this with the heat gun for just a few seconds. You'll be able to see when the chocolate melts. It doesn't take very long at all. You can see it soften right before your eyes. I place the stamp in the middle of the chocolate and just press down lightly so that I get a nice image. Once you have a set of these, they're ready to go to the fridge to harden up. You're gonna leave the stamp in the chocolate while they sit in the fridge. After a few minutes, they're ready to come out, and then the image is revealed as I peel the stamps away where the flexibility of that acrylic really comes in handy. So there's my snowflake. Here's some stars and swirls, and we have a pair of mittens, too. These are gonna be a gift in itself, but we can't stop there. We need a yummy package, because presentation is everything. And what would chocolates be without a pretty gold box? So, we have this template available on the website. Simply go and download the design guide. It's all right there for you. I've printed this out onto some Judikins Shimmer Coat cardstock. This is really heavy. It's gonna make a sturdy box. And it comes in a variety of colors, all which sparkle with glittering goodness. It's just the right size to fit into my printer. So I can print right onto it. I don't have to trace the template or guess about measurements. But before I get to that, I need to grab some tools from my handy, clip it up. This is so awesome because I, have everything I need right here, and I don't have to dig around in my endless boxes of supplies. I've really loaded it down with a lot of stuff, and it's sturdy, it still spins. It comes with awesome bags for all my odds and ends. So now that I have what I need, I've cut out my template, and I'm ready to fold the box. But because of the weight of this cardstock, it's important that we score our fold lines first. So, using a ruler and a bone folder, I just lightly go along the lines. This is gonna make a clean fold, and it's gonna look much more professional when you're done. I'm also using my bone folder to assist me with the fold so I get a straight edge. Continue scoring and folding until you have everything completed. Your next step is to bring back your Hannah stamps from earlier and to do some embossing. If you don't know how to emboss or you need a full tutorial, check out Judy's episode, Elegant Embossing. And remember to do all your chocolates first before you taint the stamps with any ink. 
Or better yet, why don't you buy two sets, one for chocolate and one for crafts? When you're done embossing, you have an excellent little package that looks like this. Your last step is to adhere all of the sides together. Just use some dry adhesive and follow the directions on the template. Once you have all your corners completed, you can add your special touches like stickers, ribbons, whatever makes you happy. Add some tissue paper and your stamped chocolates into the box and you have a complete and sweet little treat. Let me show you what other confections we've come up with. Here you can see we have several versions of our candy boxes. We've also got this coordinating card which we made from the larger elements of those stamp sets from earlier. And if you're really in the mood to cook, I've made these cupcakes with another stamp set and stamped in fondant and cut out the little flowers. So this holiday, take it easy on yourself and your wallet by treating everyone to these tasty bites. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.